Hi guys, so it's finally here. The most requested feature in Teams since it was launched is private channels. And Microsoft announced this week at Ignite that not only is it finished, but it's also now generally available. And it popped up into our tenant the other day. So here's a video about everything you need to know about private channels. In this video, we're just gonna step through how to create a private channel, who can set them up, and uh, some limitations about them. My name is Gavin Jones. I'm Transformation Manager for Fortune 500 Company and all the tips that we have covered in this channel are out of real life situations so hopefully you find them useful as well. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about every time we release a new video. We've got new videos on Teams coming out every single Tuesday so make sure you keep informed. And it's been long enough waiting for private channels so let's get in and take a quick look at them. Okay, so here we are in Teams in our first private channel. You can see that it's private because it's got a little padlock next to it. First thing to note is who can create a private channel is uh, if you go to manage team and this just appears right in your normal member permissions bit of your settings in your channel. So if you're in a large team or if you want a bit of control, um, you can turn off allowing members to create and update any channel and if you turn that off it obviously turns off the ability to create a private channel um, in our main team we've got it turned off in terms of creating any channel uh, and therefore no one else but the owner can create private channels but by default um, any member as long as they're not a guest um, can create private channels uh, any other member can't even see uh, the channel with a padlock um, so you need to be mindful of that, that people don't create too many private channels and therefore uh, stop Teams being useful because one of the benefits is that you can see what's going on across your team. But if you're an owner, you can still see which channels have been set up and if they're private, but you might not be a member of them by default just because you're an owner of the team. Um, so you need to bear that in mind as well if you want a bit of control. In terms of adding a private channel, same as adding any other channel. Click on the three dots at the team, click add channel, and um, let's just call it test private two because we've got one up. And uh, down at the bottom, it's now just got a uh, little drop down menu to say, do you want a standard channel or a private one? And if it's got a little hover over to say what's, uh, what you might want to use each one of those. So the only difference with a private channel is when you click next, it one out of the channel but then immediately brings you into add members into that channel so the only other person i've got in my uh, team in the test team is my uh, own email so we'll add that in and click done so then we've now got two channels with the padlock on and i think microsoft did a typo on their doc unless i read it wrongly but i think in their thing it says to add people to a private channel you do it through the manage team button um, and you probably could get through it through here actually so you can still get through it there but you can click on the three dots here and you get a few different uh, options so you can add members to a private channel if we click on the testing channel three dots you don't get the option because everybody in the team is a member of the normal channels but in a private channel you can only it's only for specific members and you would add members just with the three dots there. So you're adding members to the private channel. They need to be members of the team first before you can add them into the private channel. Um, and then people, only people in the private channel can see stuff in the private channel. People in the team can see everything else in the team, but the ones with the padlock, if they're not a member of those uh, channels specifically. Um, you get a few different options to so get leave the channel because you can leave just the channel without leaving the team. Again, if we go into the testing, channel that isn't an option you can delete the channel if you're an owner uh, or if you're a member by default if you've got delete channels turned on um, and everything works pretty much as you would expect a private channel to work because i guess people have been asking for it for uh, well over a couple of years now so all the files in the private channel are just for people that are in the private channel um, Teams does that in the background by creating a sort of cut down SharePoint site just for the private channel. So I think you just get a document library um, by default. 
Um, Microsoft in their documentation says you can easily expand that back out to a full size SharePoint site if you wanted to um, and get access to the news and all the stuff you'd usually get as a SharePoint site. But I guess at least in our teams, we've got that covered by the entire team SharePoint site and if private channels, we just wanna segregate the conversation and segregate the files. So in real life, we've got a, uh, a sales channel wide team, um, but before we had private channels, we had a separate, a complete separate team just for the senior managers to collaborate on more strategic things and uh, maybe some, you know, people, um, stuff they need to talk about that they don't want everyone else to see because it's uh, a bit confidential. We had a complete separate team or like a couple of separate teams to manage that. And now we've got private channels. It's great because we can keep the same uh, team where we know everybody's in and where you've got people that are already in a team but need to collaborate a bit more privately you can set up a private channel. Most tabs work at the time of recording. Um, what Microsoft specifically say doesn't work is Planner. And if you go to add in a tab, um, you'll see that Planner isn't there. And if you search for it, it's not there either. So I'm not sure they've, um, they've managed to, like they did with the SharePoint document library, just setting that for cut down version. I'm not sure they've managed to get Planner to set up a separate instance of itself because I guess Planner at the moment works on Office 365 group to work. Um, so I'm not sure they've cracked that one, but I'm sure they will get uh, to it. But everything else works um, as you would expect. And um, yeah, not much more to it than that. The functionality is exactly the same. Um, you need to be mindful about who can and can't set up a private channel when you um, go into your uh, settings and member permissions um, and if you're an owner you can see the private channels there if you're a normal member if you're not in the private channel you can't even see that it's there so you can have things that are um, you know a bit more uh, private you don't even want people to see the the title of that channel so maybe it's a really secret project um, you can still do that within a, an, another team um, safe in the fact that people won't even be able to guess your project title if you've uh, got it encrypted in some way. Um, so just scrolling through the Microsoft document just in case we've forgotten anything, but um, probably common sense for the rest of the stuff. What happens when a team member leaves or is removed from a team, then also be removed from the private channel because you need to be a member of the team to get into the private channel anyway, and that sort of works as you would expect. They've got some good little tables about who can and can't see stuff in a, in a matrix in a couple of ways. Um, but again, it's it's sort of common sense. This one sort of walks you through why you might want a private channel and, and not something else. In my day job, quite a lot of people have got themselves tied up in knots using private chats or group chats instead of using stuff in the team. Um, and then they've been either bringing documents out of the team and into the private chat or vice versa and getting confused with the permissions about what people can and can't see and how to move it from the team into a chat, vice versa. Um, private channels just help eradicate all that. It's a lot more simple and uh, common sense, at least for uh, normal end users. So this one's quite good in terms of who can and can't do what in a uh, private channel. So if you are a owner or a member, you can create a private channel. Um, the team owner can delete private channels. Um, everybody can leave private channels. But then just a note that whether you're the team owner or not, uh, the private channel owner is separate to the team owner. So I could be the team owner for the entire team, but my boss, as, uh, as we bring the senior manager function into a private channel, he could be the private channel owner for the senior team. So not crossing over that the team owner's got, um, you know, really much more power than the private channel. Um, you can have a private channel that doesn't have the team owner in, um, in that instance where it's appropriate. Um, and basically it's sort of replicated as again as you would expect so private channel owner can do most of the stuff an owner can do in the, across the whole team um, they can do for just for the private channel so the private channel owner can add members private channel members can't add members um, because you wouldn't want people adding people without the private channel owner being aware um, again private channel owner can uh, change the settings private channel member can't and a team owner can't unless they're also their owner of the private channel, if that makes sense. So that um, table is really well worth a look, especially if you want to implement it 
in a, uh, a good way. And that's just Google search Microsoft Teams private channels. This is the first hit, but it's docs.microsoft.com, uh, Microsoft Teams slash private channels. And then the final thing is just a bit of consideration about uh, access to private channels. So saying OneNote, um, could people still could access that OneNote um, if they're granted access in a private channel and then removed from the private channel, won't remove access to that OneNote notebook. Uh, not an issue for us because we're not um, pushed people ahead onto OneNote um, that much in our organization. And we're using Wiki for a lot of the stuff that we would use OneNote for in a shared uh, capacity. Uh, but just want to bear in mind, um, I guess if you've granted them access in private anyway, and removing them, then they still got access probably isn't that much of a concern um, because they've you give them access at the start anyway. So hopefully that was a good little quick overview of private channels. Um, I'm sure you want to dive in and get stuck in because it's been uh, such a long time coming for Microsoft to sort that and I think they've done it in a really good way actually. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried private channels? Are they uh, useful for you? Um, how long have you been waiting for them? Let us know in the comments below. And uh, remember to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already so you get notified about our new videos coming out every week. And then lastly, as usual, at uh, me time, we think Teams is great for collaboration and freeing up time. We think there's a big opportunity for organizations to get better at running meetings. And we've got a meeting timer in the App Store. Um, search for me time or visit www.metimeapps.com to check out our iPhone app. So thanks for watching this far and uh, we'll see you in the next video.